everybody. Welcome to more books of V. Charisse. Um, I'm excited to talk to you today because I'm going to talk about something a little bit different than I usually talk about. And I know I haven't been around, you know, but that's going to change soon. I, I absolutely promise. Um, today, I actually did a cosplay photo shoot um, for my forthcoming book, Dr. Marvelous Jen's Odd Scholars. And I'm dressed like this because I cosplayed as Dr. Marvelous Jen, one of the characters in my novel. And it was so much fun. It's um, been a long time coming. As a child, I really enjoyed Halloween from, I don't know, pre-K on up to maybe like grade three or four. My mom and I would start planning my Halloween costume late summer. Then we would work together. We would make it together you know, and of course I'll wear it on Halloween. So, you know, it was a tradition in my house and um, something that I haven't done with my own son, but I think I'm going to pick that up, especially next year. Um, but yeah, so uh, this year I didn't let COVID stop me. I had a really cool socially distanced photo shoot and um, that was safe. Make sure you guys know we were safe and, you know, masks were worn, six feet and all that. But um, it, it turned out amazing, and um, I'm so happy I did it. So first of all, I want to thank Mamie Brown, the makeup artist. She's unbelievable. Um, we spent three hours of my makeup this morning, and then this afternoon, Rebecca Dupa, Dr. Rebecca Dupa, was my photographer, and we did a photo shoot here in Baltimore at Jewett Hill Park, and it was just a glorious, glorious, wonderful day. And we had fun. So I just wanted to talk a little bit about Dr. Marvelous Jen and um, my inspiration for her. So um, anyone who knows me knows that I absolutely love history. You know, it's something that is really near and dear to me. Um, I've loved history for as long as I can remember. My mother always really pushed me to learn more about my history, the history of um, black people in this country and black people throughout the diaspora and of course you know black people on the continent and that led me to want to know more about history in general you know world history and that of course led me to Carmen San Diego and I love those games and, and geography and even to this day I'm, I'm very good at geography and um I have this obsession with the 1920s, 1930s, you know, 1940s. I, I love that time period between Reconstruction and the beginning of the Civil Rights Movement. And I think I like it so much and I'm intrigued by it because um, Black people in this country were really thriving during that time. They had no choice because of Jim Crow, you know, they created their own towns that were completely self-sufficient and They'd um, just built these amazing communities that were not only just existing, but as I said, they were thriving, you know. And um, so I wanted to dig into that. And I also just had this thing for vaudeville and I also have this thing for medicine shows. And that, that just time period has always intrigued me. So in my research, I actually stumbled upon a magician named Benjamin Rucker. Benjamin Rucker was born in Virginia. And after running into another magician, another black magician in the early 1900s, he uh, studied under this other magician and then he became Black Herman. And um, what was unique about Black Herman is he was a Garveyite. He was a follower of Marcus Garvey. And <laughs> During his shows, he performed up and down the East Coast. You know, um, he did a lot of performances in New York during the 19 uh, teens and 1920s. And he would actually sell like these um, talismans and potions to ward off racism. And this is in the 1920s. And so I, I'm, I'm digging and I'm reading about it. And I'm like, what? You know, this is just such obscure like, yet amazing history that I didn't know about. And, you know, when I talked to other people, most other folks hadn't known, known about it, you know, so I wanted to write about it. So at the core, um, Dr. Jen's Odd Scholars is, is inspired by 
the story of Black Herman. And I implore you all to look up more about him. Um, just a fantastic story, you know. And, and then as I'm digging deeper, um, I stumble upon Black amusement parks, colored amusement parks. So during Jim Crow, you know, we obviously know that this was separate but equal, you know, and they were obviously black and white water fountains and black and white restaurants. But there were also places of leisure that were only meant for white people and only meant for people, you know, black people as well. So, you know, this extended beyond restaurants and movie theaters and lunch counters to, you know, places of, um, of a, uh, uh, Places of, I don't want to call it places of pleasure because that sounds weird, but, you know, just just places to where people went to to have fun, you know. And so I stumbled upon this amusement park called Suburban Gardens. And Suburban Gardens was a colored amusement park during the 1920s in Washington, D.C. And it was originally where Nanny Helen Burroughs Avenue is now, all right? There's an actual, you know, road uh, called Nanny Helen Burroughs in D.C., it's in Northeast D.C., and that is where suburban gardens used to be. And the amazing thing about suburban gardens is it was developed by H.D. Watson, who is a Black architect. It was funded by a construction company that was run, owned, and operated by Black people, and um, this was just an incredible amusement park. And it was huge. It had a roller coaster. It had pavilions. It had a place for um, jazz bands to come and play and swing bands to come and play. You know, this is the 1920s. So, you know, you have a lot of swing, you know, that kind of music and um, ragtime. And um, they also had bumper cars and they had, you know, food pavilions and games and you know it was an actual amusement park but it was a colored amusement park and it was owned and operated by black people and suburban gardens wasn't the only one there were several throughout the united states i i located i researched and i found another one that was in kansas city missouri i believe and i found another one that was in florida and i believe another one that was in ohio so i think I found at least four, but I'm gonna to have to dig a little bit deeper. So anyway, um, you know, I've I've developed this this <laughs> this character that's loosely based on um, on Black Herman, and then I said, well, wow, what if this magician, you know, was a little bit like Willy Wonka? As a child, I absolutely loved Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Yeah, it was Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, excuse me. Charlie and the Chocolate Factory was my favorite book. I read it at least five or 10 times. You know, I can't tell you how many times I read that book. And I would always say, out of all the golden tickets, not one black, Hispanic, Asian person found a golden ticket. You know, and I always wanted to write the quote unquote black Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. You know, so that's how Dr. Jen's Odd Scholars were born. Um, Dr. Marvelous Jen is a magician. She's a sorcerer and she's mysterious, but she's worked with H.C. Woodson in my book <laughs> to create a colored amusement park. But it's not just any amusement park. It is a magical amusement park that's filled with mythological creatures. And um, she's on the cusp of opening up this park in June of 1920, and she puts out the word through Garvey's Negro World newspaper because Dr. Jen is also a Garveyite, and in the book she has been funded and supported by um, the Honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey, and um, she's built this park, and so she's put out the word that she wants four teenagers to engage in these competitions and strength and ingenuity and chemistry and, and magical prowess. And so she's, um, she's literally put all this together for these, these uh, teenagers to kind of, you know, compete so that they can be the first individuals to tour the park and give their opinion of the park. And she's also included a, uh, 
a full scholarship to Hampton Institute, which it was Hampton Institute back in 1920 before it became Hampton College. So, um, you know, I I just, that's how Dr. Jen was born. You know, she, she's full of mystery. She's, she's full of, um, she's full of intrigue. And um, I just hope that you all will really enjoy reading about her, reading about the adventure that the four young people, you know, experience inside of her park. And um, it was so much fun. So thanks so much to Rebecca Dupas. Rebecca Dupas is a amazing writer and educator, as well as an incredible photographer. All right, so um, check out Rebecca Dupas and I'll be releasing those, you know, pictures from the photo shoot soon. And definitely shout out to Mamie Brown. Mamie Brown did my makeup, this amazing makeup that she did for me, you know, um, took us three hours, but we got through it. And I was extremely pleased, just two extraordinary sisters that I got to work with today to recreate Dr. Jen. And again, I, I hope you all enjoy it. And I just wanted to give you some background on Dr. Marvelous Jen's Odd Scholars coming soon. There'll be some, that's my son, he's three. So yeah, try to block that out. But anyway, <laughs> um, you know, I'll have links soon, you know, to, to pre-order and that novel will be available sometime early 2021. So thank you so much for tuning in and enjoy the rest of your weekend. Take care.